What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for another episode of Daylight. In the previous episode we had found ourselves a holy bible and now we're going to use it to burn down a jail kit. It's behind me isn't it? Yep, I knew it. But then... I can't see anything. Well, yeah, because they've blocked the screen off with like weird red stuff. I mean, I can't see anything either. I mean, I realize I'm inside your head. Wouldn't that be kind of humorous right now if I was just the voice inside of her head? Just making the whole situation worse. So with our singular flare that we have remaining... While the doc's methods are sometimes unconventional, we can't argue with his results. Not only have we helped advance science and save lives, but we've gotten several confessions out of these scumbags as well. The things these people admit to doing are just sickening. Can't believe I ever doubted old Mercer. Okay, so there's some freebie flares. It's alliterative. It adds to the fun and the flavor. Couple of G-men standing with a cop. Attention guards, by order of Dr. Mercer, guards would remain outside the infirmary at all times unless otherwise notified. When dropping off prisoners or patients, guards may remain outside of the infirmary doors but are not allowed to enter unless specifically requested by Dr. Mercer. Any guard who does not comply will be terminated on the spot with no benefits. Oh, I didn't mean to drop that and I can't pick it back up now. I accidentally click all the time because I'm an idiot like that. Yeah. It's something remarkable. It. The guards sometimes made the work easily accessible. Inmates think that this penitentiary is some kind of joke. They think that since there are so many inmates that we don't know how to keep them in line. And to be honest, it's not far from the truth. Not only have I been informed that we have less than five months until the place is shut down, I've also been told that we've reached full capacity. I hear some of the guards talking about not stopping the fights anymore and letting the prisoners solve our little overpopulation problem themselves. Suppose that door's already blocked off, and that one's not opening. Society's needs got before the individual's needs. Since you're new to this part of the prison, I wanted to give you a heads up on how things work around here. Make sure guards are standing by when you open the doors after questioning. The doors themselves all trigger on the same electric switch. Cheap bastards, right? And don't worry about the clunking sounds you hear in the pipe. It's not any ghosts or anything, it's just boilers being routed through the area. Expect to see maintenance down here every once in a while, messing with the valves and checking to make sure all the seals are intact. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Well, obviously, here's another one of those switchboards or whatever. So that's turned on this. Oh, yay, let's announce our presence with lots of jingling bells. So the door down there is open and the door over here is open. Let's go ahead and have a look in the door closest. Looks like we've got ourselves one of the blue notes. Sounds like a band, the Blue Notes. To Dr. Mercer, even as the new financial advisor of Mid-Island Penitentiary, there isn't anything that I could do to keep this place running for more than nine months. Almost all funding has been cut because of the poor performance of the penitentiary. While you claim to have made great scientific breakthroughs, we need results that we can sell if you want to keep funding your experiments. If the violence doesn't stop, we're going to have to face closure. Start giving out a heavier doses of pills or something. We simply can't support any more lawsuits. Okay, so you can climb over these. Anybody there? Unfortunately, no flares or nothing lootable. And it's a picture of a what appears to be some kind of riot. It doesn't look like a prison riot because they're not in prison clothes, but whatever. I don't know. But they suffered. They suffered. Don't go crazy on me. I know it's close right now. I realize insanity is very, very close, but you need to cling to that edge until we get out of here so that you can go crazy once we're out and then you can have like PTSD for the rest of it. Oh, that's nice. Typically, I expect steamy situations to be a little bit more pleasurable, but nay, not the case. This one, distinctly unpleasant. Hop the counter here, watch out for broken glass. And another blue note. I didn't do the things you think I did. I know I confessed. Who wouldn't with what happens to us? But I never harmed anyone in my life. When I came here, I was sane, but this place is making me crazy. I can't shut the voices out of my head anymore, and it's all I can do to scratch away chunks of wall instead of my own face. By the time you find this, I'll either be safe or drowned. Either way, I hope that you rot in hell for what you've done to me. No. 
I'm pretty sure asking politely. I mean, I noticed that you used your P's and Q's right there, but... Oh, it came out of the wall. That's not phys <laughs> That's not physically proper. And that was about the squeal that I would be making if I was in this situation. That noise right there, totally the noise that I would emit. I don't know what to do with myself right now. It seems like you get those remnant hunting phases in between like these storyline phases where there's actually no real threat. What is this? Onward and upward, my dear. We have much to see, and so little time between us. That is onwards and downwards, so I'm not gonna go that way. He clearly said onwards and upwards. Picture of a jail cell. And a manacle. Well, I don't see anywhere else to go. Oh, this is such a terrible idea. Yep. Fuck everything about this. There is no part of this that I do not just wish the most horrid curses upon. This is miserable. You're not behind me, are you? Okay, good. I would really prefer that she not be behind me right now. Place is in desperate need of a plumbing specialist. It can be difficult. Building hopes on a foundation of confusion, misery, and death. Alright, let's do the searchy search. There's our first remnant, so we're back on. March 29th, 1940. Employee Rob Sandoval service. Trapped. It's been two days and I haven't found my way out of these sewers. I drank some water from a leaking pipe and I think it made me sicker. The layout of this place makes no sense to me, and every time I think I could smell the ocean, I reach a dead end. I expect help will come shortly. The weeks following the crash have been a test for me. These tunnels were renovated before the war, much larger in case they need to hide from enemy bombing raids, but it just created a trap for the bodies. When the water level gets high enough, the backflow into the sewer can be pretty harsh, and right now it's all I could do to not spill my guts when I smell the mix of tepid salt water and the disgusting sweetness of rotten bodies. They're here, and we'll find them all eventually, but I hate this place. It's as if the decay is faster here. Oh, Jesus! Well, there's our last glow stick, and they haven't seen fit to provide us with any more. So I suppose I'll hustle while the sun's shining, the proverbial hand sun. Great. Oh man, I was clicking fast. Thank you for the nine trillion glow sticks, but I would absolutely love a flare right now considering the critter has us trapped in a very, very tight space. What is this? Nope. I got a flare, but I'm going to save that one for later until I have more of them. Mid-Island Hospital Maintenance Report. September 14th, 1932. Employee Adam Peterson. Serviced pipe leak sewer. With the funds available, I managed to hire two temporary workers to come down and tackle the pipe problem. Other problems were deemed irrelevant. However, retaining those employees is proving to be a problem. I don't speak much of their language, but they keep saying something about a flashing light in a face. I have no idea what they're talking about. I'll admit, though, those stories of wandering shadows do feel a bit more real down here. Yeah, I'm gonna turn around now. Yeah, that's how you get some. You thought I was out of flares. Shoot. That's what happens. Ghosts don't want none. February 5th, 1920, concerning the death of Officer Dawson. Officer Dawson went missing more than three years ago. He was last seen as he stepped out for dock patrol in the spring of 1917. We searched the area and had boats trolled nearby the water, but eventually he was presumed dead. We were so very, very wrong. Okay, so what remains? I'm not trying to be punny here, but...
I sincerely do not have the supplies to keep this going on forever. So here appears to be God, the sigil. <laughs> Basically, if she gets us trapped back behind one of these, it seems as though she's only going to come out behind us most of the time. So if we can keep moving... Did he just say they've presented the sigil? Who's they? Uh, Officer Dawson was still alive. We found him up at the docks while tying up a shipment. He emerged from the sewers, raving to us to leave the birds alone. We all heard stories about a crow man who feeds the damn birds, but I never thought too much of it. Dawson was the crow man. He came at us with a pipe, and we had no choice but to put him down. He was shot 22 times before he dropped. We tried to examine the body. He pushed us off and ran to the forest, screaming about preparing for the returning of 13 before finally collapsing dead. He gave the other officers the rest of the week off. The hell happened to Dawson? And what's the return of 13? Okay, and so I think back here was where I took a juncture that didn't follow through. Yeah, right here. Oh good, she's here again. Behind me! Yep, there she is. Aha! Another note. The crows weren't hurting me, I understand now. We all serve, and we all offer up flesh for the return. I must send flesh for the birds. Flesh for the return. Signed, the crow man. Got another flare to replace the one that we've already got lit. So now, we've just got to find the sigil. Got another one. What is this? Is that a voodoo doll? What is that thing? Oh god. No. They never forgave those who persecuted them so. Four hundred years of rage, Sarah. Four hundred years of rage. Oh good, she's behind us again. Let me see if I can keep trucking here so she can't catch me. I find that in these situations it's best just not to turn around. can't see with ass on my phone right now, which makes sense because an ass doesn't have eyes, so why would you be able to see with it? However, oh, she's in here, isn't she? I'm totally disoriented. There we go. Alright. So there goes another sigil gate. We've made it. But that has only taken us to what looks like another sigil... Okay. The more I keep at this diary business, the more I like it. I took to wandering the tunnels a bit and found the old pump room. I heard they wanted to treat the sewage on the island here, turn it into drinking water or something. Guess it never really got that far off the ground. Still, it's my good fortune. Now I got this nice little private office with a desk I can use when Mercer isn't using it. It's almost like my own personal little fortress. Okay, so we've got a pulley system over here that appears to be operating some manner of screaming. I don't know. It's weird that all the boilers are still running. Considering this place is like shut down. I mean, then again, it's probably haunted. You know, just the inclination that I'm getting. Mercer told me that I couldn't come to my office anymore. He says there's too much work to do for me to come down here whenever I want. I tried to explain to him that I need this place, that it helps me deal with the stress, but what does he care, though? I can't write anywhere else. This is the only place where I feel like I hear the real things inside my head. It's odd. I'm never lonely down here. It feels like I'm with my mother, but she died years ago. Some sort of presence here, and I can't give that up. I think this is where I belong. Hmm? Please don't be behind me. One of the new guards went missing. We don't typically come down here, but Mercer asked us to find him before he gets in the way of the work we're doing. Hope the kid's okay. Well...
deploy Adam Peterson. Service, reset power to bridge. We almost lost the bridge the other day with a heavy rain. Remember, when we get additional fluids running through here, we must raise the bridge. It's your only way out of here. If the power cuts out again, it must be reset in order for the bridge to operate. All pump room staff needs to be familiarized with the process. We wouldn't want anybody getting stuck down here and missing their ferry off the island. Yeah, no kidding. It'd be the first thing that I was looking for if I was trying to get the hell out of here. We got freebie glow sticks on offer. We might as well light this bad boy up. We found him. We all knew that he was upset and how some of the other guards were treating him, but the docs told us that his diary was helping him. I read through it to look for a suicide note, but his last entry doesn't make any sense. I transcribed here for clarity, and we're going to pass it to the police in case it's some kind of code. Just a bunch of ones and threes. Doc, I did what you asked. Patient 13's records were destroyed and we burnt everything that she ever wore, used, or created in the sewer furnace. How did you know about the old furnace down in the tunnels? It doesn't look like anybody's been down here for decades. It's like one of those mother knows best situations. I'm thinking crazily is how they fit right now because... This is sort of worrying. I can only guess that that switch right there... How they connect. That definitely doesn't appear to be union approved. Like the ropes are just like attached to nothingness. <laughs> it's a magic bridge. a cell phone signal so deep underground. Let's have a hell of a service plan. Oh no. How fit are you, sir? Going to try and swim for it. I would. You're a healthy little thing. I bet you can make it you're so close. Yeah, hell with all that. I'm swimming to the city. Like right there. I mean, we're almost safe. We're so close. That explains the cell phone signal, though. You might be able to get it. What the hell is that? A fairy? And not the kind of ones that hang out in the forest, like chilling with Peter Pan and stuff. Hopefully, the fairy to get me the hell out of here. This place sucks. What is this? Let's use it without knowing what it's for. That's always a good operating procedure. Emergency flares. Picture of a dirt guy. Some stylish shoes. Yet it is our fear that makes us heal our humanity, corrupting us with each delicate thread. Well, it wants me to use a flare, so I suppose I will oblige. Although lighting the entire dock on fire doesn't seem like the best. Oh, it blew up the tank. Okay, could have gone worse. At least it didn't blow up me. Which was what I was slightly concerned about. Let's go find this note over here because obviously they want me to climb up and then we'll figure it out. Concerning Jason Bertelli, employee believed to have survived the fall, but died afterwards from injuries. Unexplained loss of eyes, though some believe this could have happened in the fall. Doctors wanted to perform an autopsy, but we're ruling this one an accident. Moving on, family of the deceased has been notified. It seems odd that the fire is only limited to, like, that rock right there. The island's only flammable rock. Push that into place. And we'll drop that guy right there. 
Let's do a little upper body. Get ourselves climbed on up. Watch out for splinters, obviously. Just make a bad situation worse. First you got ghosts, then you got splinters, damn it. Nobody likes splinters. The building appears to be on fire, and my only choice is to drop down into it. Sure, jump into the flaming building. Whatever. It'll all work out great. May 26th, concerning unexplained occurrences on the job site, numerous complaints that workers have been seeing things. When asked to elaborate, some have said that they see people out of the corner of their eye only to turn and that nothing is there. A general sense of dread and being watched seems to be affecting all the workers. The highest volume of complaints come from the night shift, which has gone so far as to state seeing actual people within the construction area. Charter boat catches fire June 16th, 1939. Tragedy once again strikes New Kipling, this time as a charter boat, Compass Lily caught fire while rounding the coast of the Mid-Island. It's believed that 1,342 people were on board at the time, and only 332 have since been confirmed alive. The survivors were rushed to the Mid-Island Hospital and given immediate care. God, it's a pretty good death toll. According to official investigation, it is believed that the accident was caused by a problem in the engine room. It's also been discovered that all safety protocols were incredibly substandard, and rumors bound that the boat's chief engineer was mentally unstable. The company that owned the Compass Lily has stated that they are deeply sorry for what has happened and have promised that it will be used state-of-the-art safety procedures from now on. You only had to kill a thousand people. If that's not corporate thought, that's... I don't know anything about the world. It's been a long week, and it's not getting any shorter. Everyone's been working extra long hours since the ferry crash. Nobody knows what to say to each other anymore. My sister died on that boat, but you don't see me slowing down because of it. These patients need us, even the ones who can't muster more than a blank stare into space. Even the ones who can't stop reliving the nightmare of watching their friends and loved ones drown because of a madman. We all do what we can, because we, because we must. The reports keep pouring in from anonymous locals concerning bodies washing up on the shore. Usually these reports are accompanied by witnesses stating that the deceased are wearing prison uniforms consistent with those from the prison on Mid-Island. Each time we drive to the scene though, the bodies are mysteriously gone. The only thing we ever see are a bunch of crows. For now, we're putting these calls on low priority standing. It's probably just some kids pulling pranks. Better not be any swamp monsters. If there's swamp monsters, I'm gonna be upset. Or ocean monsters, whatever you want to call them. Or a crash or some kind There's of. No escaping fate. I feel like my character is getting crazier, and if I had spent the last hour with things jumping out at me and attempting to set me on fire and claw my eyes out, I probably I don't blame her. To the edge of the miraculous. I don't know. This doesn't appear so miraculous. Oh damn it! All right, well I'm gonna break off the episode right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle. Will you stop that? I'm trying to end the episode. Thank you. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and farewell.